In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, use the uh, software uh, for the uh, LabVolt Festo trainers that will interface to the uh, data acquisition module. Um, so I'm going to click over here on the icon that says LVDAC-EMS. It's going to ask for a language which defaults to English, so I'll say OK. So make sure uh, before starting this software that you do have your uh, USB cable connected to the acquisition module and also your 24 volts connected to the module first. Uh, it just makes it easier to do this setup. Uh, so once you get to this window, you're just going to hit connect mode. And then if you have power and your USB connected, it should find the module. And you should see this screen here. And if the voltage is not selected, we'll select 120 volts, uh, 60 hertz, which is what we're operating off of. Okay. So if this doesn't come up, check your connections, close the software, and try it again. But once you have this, you'll just hit OK. And you'll hear the relays click inside the module. And you're good to go. Uh, so the most common thing we're going to be using is the meters uh, for voltage and current. So click on this icon right here. It looks like a little needle of a meter moving. And that will open up the metering window. And you'll see here that we have our four voltage meters, E1, E2, E3, and E4 and our four amp meters, I1, I2, I3, and I4 that's available on the module. All right, we also have down here uh, meters for uh, the power to measure the watts, uh, but they're not on right now. So if I want to turn, say, this one on right here, uh, just click on this M13 for meter 13, and that makes it active. Okay, and I can click it again to turn it off, just like that. So if I'm not using, say, these extra meters up here, I can turn them off as well. So just click on the meter number, and I can turn those all off. Okay, so I'm only using one voltmeter and one amp meter right now, so I'll just keep those off. All right, so with each meter, uh, it's opened up in its default to AC. I am actually have a DC circuit connected right now, so I'm going to change that. So I just click here where it says AC and swap it to DC for my voltage and my current. Okay, I can also change my power um, meter. Right now it's in watts, but I can change it to other formats uh, for AC power, so I can click here and change it to VARs, and I can change it to volt amps as well. Okay, but since again I have a DC circuit here, I'm just going to leave it on watts. All right, so it's active. You see the numbers changing, so it's constantly refreshing, and that's what mode it's in. And if you want to freeze it, you can just hit a single refresh and it will hold that value and not change. But if I leave it on the continuous refresh, I have just a simple resistive load circuit measuring voltage and current. So as I increase my variable DC supply, the value of voltage, current, and power all increase as I increase the voltage on the supply. Okay, so again here I'm only hooked up to one voltmeter and one amp meter, but it works the same on all four. Alright, so I can record this information by going to the data table, which is this icon right here. So if I click that, it opens up the data table, and then I want to tell it what I want to record. So I go to Options, Record Settings. And I'm just going to do E1 and I1. Okay, so you can select multiple meters from the metering banks you have here, but since I'm only connected to E1 and I1, that's all I'm going to use. So I'll say OK. 
So to record the data, you click on this uh, icon right here. It looks like the table with a little pencil by it. So right now I'm on zero volts, so I'm going to hit record, and it's going to record that information. Then I'm just going to do it in intervals of 20 volts. So I'm going to go up to 20 volts. Record. 40 volts. Record. 60 volts. Eighty. A hundred. And a hundred and twenty. All right, so now I got all that data captured so I can see my voltage intervals and then I can see the relationship of voltage and current. Uh, so when I go from uh, 20 volts to 40 volts, my current doubles. And I can see that relationship all the way through. All right, so now I can take this data of my uh, voltage, current, and my power and graph it. So if I click on this icon right here that says graph, that will open up the function to graph this table. All right, so I'm gonna set my y-axis to read current and my x-axis to read the voltage. Okay, so there I can see as I increase my voltage, the current steadily increased. So basically this is zero to one amp, which we never got up to one amp. So as my voltage increased, my current increased. And you can do different layouts with the graph function on here as well. All right. So I'm going to close that. So if I need to repeat this procedure for a different resistance value, let's say, I can go here to where this table with the eraser symbol is, and that will clear all the data. I'll just say yes, and that clears it all out, and I can repeat the procedure with a different resistance value. All right, so... One other feature I'll look at is the oscilloscope. So when you move into AC, so I'm going to switch these to AC, and I'm going to move my wire connections into the variable AC, and I'll open the oscilloscope function, which is right here. So it already has E1 and I1 as my defaults, and that's what I'm connected into. It has the scale set for the voltage at 50 volts per division, and the current is set at 0.5 amps per division, and the time base is at 50 milliseconds. It's already in a continuous refresh mode right here, so as I increase my voltage, it will automatically show up because I have it on continuous refresh. So I'm going to go on up to 120 volts. All right, so my voltage um, is in 50 volts per division. So that'd be 50, 100, 150. And then if I count my subdivisions, 
that's going to be two marks past that, so that's 160, 170, which is the peak value of the AC sine wave. And then my current is in a half an amp per division, so that's going to be 0.5 and then 1 amp, so it's right at uh, one, 1 amp of current. And I can see here that they are in phase with one another, okay, because I have just a resistive load. If I take and move this to say my capacitive load, you see the current shifts from the voltage. So the current sine wave is behind the voltage. If I do this with my inductor, I can see that current is ahead of the voltage. or behind, depending on the perspective. I guess it's technically behind because the voltage starts here and then the current doesn't start till here. Yeah, that's actually how that works. So that's the inductor. That's the capacitor, so current leads voltage with the capacitor. Okay, uh, so you can change the different settings. I'll go back to the resistive load, everything's back in phase. I can change my volts per division. Uh, so if I want to make it smaller, I can do 100 volts per division. If I want to make the current smaller, I could go to 1 amp per division. If I wanted to make the current bigger, I could go to 0 0.2 amps per division. But then that takes it off the screen. All right, I can also adjust my time base here if I want to, to see more or less signals on my screen. So I can do 10 milliseconds per division and increase the number, or I can do two seconds and decrease the number of sine waves on the screen. Okay. So it's just a brief introduction to the uh, LabVolt EMS software for measuring voltage and current and the different uh, functions that it has. So I'll just close out of this. Um, one other thing I'll mention too, you can uh, get different arrangements of the meter. So if I do open, um, there's different files here for selecting uh, different metering configurations for different labs. So if I just pick one here open that. Uh, no, don't want to save changes. So it'll set it up for a particular lab. Okay, so here this one just uses all meters, four volt meters for whatever this particular lab is. So uh, you can do that as well. Or you can just go straight to metering and then adjust it for yourself however you need it to be as well. Okay, now close that out. Just make sure we don't save any changes. And that's the software.